You came to YouTube looking for useful information about your life insurance claim. Do me a favor, don't let a family law attorney who's a good friend of yours handle your claim. Stay to the end of the video and I'm going to give you four steps that will virtually guarantee you get the right lawyer for your case every time. We recently had a gentleman reach out to us from the Northeast because his claim for life insurance benefits after his wife passed away was denied. Like most, he found us on referral from another attorney who knows we do this kind of work every single day. The case was complicated. His wife had gone out on disability, and while she was out, her employer switched life insurance companies. She never came back to work before she passed away. Unfortunately, when the husband went to make a claim, both the new life insurance company and the old life insurance company said, oh no. We had seen this type of case before, in our Morris versus Lincoln life insurance case, which was a very tough case, we litigated against Lincoln's very good lawyers for five years before we won in the Court of Appeals. We told this guy that although it made sense that he should be able to be paid, the case was complicated, involving two insurance companies and the employer. He asked how much it would cost to represent him, and we told him it costs nothing unless we get a recovery, and then we charged the standard one-third of the recovery. He wanted to think about this a bit, and when we next talked to him, he told us that he had a friend who does family law who would do his appeal for $5,000 flat fee. When we checked later, we found this lawyer had zero experience in litigating or handling ERISA life insurance claims, and even in her own niche, family law, she had horrible reviews. But she was cheaper. He hired that lawyer to do his appeal, paid her the $5,000, and the appeal was pretty quickly denied. He came back to us begging for us to take the case. When we looked at the paperwork, we were pretty horrified. No claim file ever requested. No records from the employer ever requested. Nothing in the appeal about the ERISA regulations. Nothing in the appeal about the language of the life insurance policies. In fact, no evidence she had actually looked at the two life insurance policies. Although she was appealing to an insurance company, most of what she sent absolved the insurance company of any responsibility. And then she failed to see that there might be a breach of fiduciary duty claim against the employer. Completely missed that, but who can blame her? She's a family lawyer. And sadly, in the appeal, she made some pretty damaging admissions that she probably didn't need to make. In short, she stepped in it. This guy spent $5,000 for a whole bunch of incompetence, and not only did it cost him money, but it cost him time. And it made our future work, if we take the case now, a lot harder. We may or may not end up taking the case. We need to get the claim file. That's step number one in all of these cases. She should have known that. Here's how you avoid this problem in the future. Go watch my video, Four Clues to Competency, which lays out the exact steps and questions you need to ask any lawyer who's going to handle a life insurance or a long-term disability claim, especially if it's governed by ERISA. Take those steps and I virtually guarantee you, you're going to find a qualified lawyer who is best for your case. Okay, talk later.